Hello there everybody, this is Kristen. Welcome back to Crochet Witch Tarot. And today, I've got a really fun video that was an idea from a really lovely person who watches my videos and made the suggestion to me. And I just thought it was such a fun idea. <laughs> so, what we are going to be looking at today is the idea of my underdog decks. Now, I sort of took this idea in two possible directions. And to me, right away, since this, this is kind of something I am not going through right now, but experiencing, I guess, is the decks that I previously rehomed and now have brought back into my collection. So at some point, it felt like that they weren't working for me for whatever reason, and then since realized, oh, like, no, that really is something I'm interested in, and now has become like pretty pretty staple in my collection. And then the other idea of this sort of underdog deck concept are the decks that I th maybe thought about for a long time or really it was a thought in my head for a long time that, oh, that would never work for me, that's not something I'd ever be interested in and then somehow or another ended up with it and they've become absolute favorites. So to begin, we're gonna look at the decks that, again, I have previously had, they left my collection and now they are back and are <laughs> absolute staples. And the first one we're gonna look at here should be no surprise if you watched my deck crush video because this is my latest repurchase. It is the Soul Cats Tarot. Now, this is a deck that I pretty much, I didn't pre-order it, but I got it very soon after it came out. Oh, maybe last year actually, almost last year. I feel like it came out last March, perhaps. And I had a lot of fun with it for a little bit, but then there just was a bit of a disconnect because I was having a hard time really feeling like I could connect to cat decks. And I've talked about this probably a million times before, so I won't belabor the point. But I really had a long while where the cat tarot was the only cat deck where I really felt like it had a place in my collection. And that place was only doing readings for Stevie for the most part. And so it that even really didn't get much use. And any other cat deck, even if I loved the look of it, like this one, I think it's so magical and fun. So it never was a thing of like just not liking the deck. It was just I never was reaching for it. And I think it's because I was looking at this deck as a cat deck in the way that I look at the cat tarot. Where it's very like cat energy that I, having a cat, <laughs> am constantly surrounded by. And so I ended up rehoming that copy. But since going through that whole ordeal with Stevie and her kidneys and her being pretty sick for a bit of time, all I could think about was this deck. And what I came to realize that I think the disconnect for me is, is that this isn't true kind of like everyday cat energy is what I refer to it as. This to me since going through that experience, feels almost like cat spirit, <laughs> if that makes sense. So it's sort of this, brings that cat energy to this more mystical place for me, which I have been totally enjoying since bringing it back in. This has really been helping do a lot of healing work around that whole situation with Stevie and just like feelings of grief around that almost, which she is, she's okay now. <laughs> she got a good bill of health at her last appointment, so that is great news. But you know, there's still feelings that happen when those, those big events take place. And this deck has really been helping with that. And it's just been a cool experience of coming back around to it and seeing it in this whole new way because of that experience. So that is the Soul Cats Tarot. Now let's get into my other repurchases. Next we've got the Somnia Tarot. And this is one that 
again, I was really excited about what I had it the first time around because all of these photographs are taken on the beaches of Long Island, very close to where I grew up. Like, maybe 15 minutes away. So these are beaches I know really well. And it was just, it was cool to just get that kind of fun fact. And I loved watching other people use it, and it's really widely used, it seems, as a kind of like shadow work deck, which I totally agree with. But I think when I had it the first time around, it, I sort of pigeonholed it there, and again, just wasn't reaching for it too often. And I thought, okay, maybe it's just the photographic style, like I'm just not... I don't know, maybe it just doesn't work for me. So again, ended up rehoming it. <laughs> but it's one that I thought about all of the time. And so when it showed up used maybe on eBay or something, I brought it back in and since doing so, it has taken on this whole new life for me where it really ends up working. Again, it does have an undeniable shadowy energy. But for me, it really takes on this kind of dark, divine energy as well. And so it really does fit into that underdog category because, again, with this category, it's sort of like, at some point, the deck felt like it wasn't working for me. And now that it's back, it's just taken on this whole new life, <laughs> which is really interesting and... It's one that I just, I couldn't see myself without now. It's almost one of those things with, with this specific set of decks where it's like almost needing them to leave so I can refresh the relationship almost, if that makes sense. So that is the Somnia Tarot. Now these last three decks are all decks I've talked about before that I rehomed and brought back in. And I had these so early on in learning tarot. And so that definitely played a part in that as well. So next we've got the Antique Anatomy Tarot. And this is one I've got two <laughs> versions of. Actually, let's look at the other version. Hold on. This is the first copy I repurchased because I wanted to follow along the mod that Dawn Michelle did on her copy, which was so much fun. So this is one that, again, I had really early on in learning tarot, and I'm, I know all that happened is just <laughs> this sort of, like, Pip-style deck just, it was too much too soon for me in learning tarot because I was really learning to read visually, which is usually how I learn things, is visually. And so this just, it wasn't giving me enough to do readings and just, I don't know, it just wasn't clicking. So I rehomed this one pretty quickly and it wasn't until, actually again, around last year that I saw that um, mod with me video from Don Michelle, and there was just, it was a weekend where there was something really heavy going on. I can't think of it. can't think of what it was, but it wasn't like personal. It was, it was like, almost like worldwide almost, I want to say. I don't know. I can't quite think of what happened, but it just was this like really heavy feeling. And so I spent a whole weekend just diving into this project and it just, it really, really helped and brought this deck new life for me because now it like really felt my own. But also I was at a point in my reading abilities where I could read a lot more easily with these Pip style decks. And I also just love the aesthetic of anything Claire Goodchild, but that was something I kind of came around to as well, more so last year. And this has just become such a favorite, especially after doing this mod. Now again, I've got two copies of this deck now because <laughs> this modded one is not super, super 
I have to be pretty gentle with it, and so I have a, another copy I got used, so that way I could shuffle it to my heart's content <laughs> without worrying about ruining the work I did on it. But I had so much fun, like, adding these, this shredded paper like Don Michelle did, but then I also added sticker symbolism for myself, which was really, really fun and cool. And so... This was definitely an underdog deck for me because after doing this project, I just totally f fell in love with this deck. And to the point where, even though this isn't the copy I use most of the time, I have the, the just regular copy of it that I use constantly. It's such a favorite now. So, that is the Antique Anatomy Tarot. Where's my bag for it? There it is. There it is. All right, next up we've got the Wildwood Tarot, another real early on purchase of mine, <laughs> and it left so quickly again, and this is another one. I've got two copies of now. <laughs> um, like I said, I got this one really early on into learning tarot, and this is just, this is not one to learn tarot on. It takes it in its own direction entirely, I would say. And so these keywords were not always matching up with what I was trying to just learn in the first place. And so it was just, it was too much too fast, really. Um, so it was more confusing than anything else. And I don't know why, because like I don't really have any sort of qualms with using guidebooks heavily. I mean, I tend to almost always read the guidebook. Especially if there's like a substantial guidebook, I'm always going to read it when I do readings for myself. And so I don't really know what it was though, but when I was learning, I think because I had actually I had this and I had antique anatomy like very close together. And I think there was something about trying to learn but having to really read the guidebook for every single card I pulled was, like, just a frustrating experience, I think. Um, so they just didn't, they did not last long in my collection. And then this I brought back in, uh, maybe last summer, and started doing the Year in the Wildwood. And it totally changed the game for me on this deck, because the first time around I had no idea that there was this journey you could do. And I don't think I was in a place where I would have wanted to do that. But bringing it back in and having this reset and then realizing there's this whole other facet to it has really just, again, brought new life to this deck and switched it from one that I really disliked, like really heavily disliked, to an absolute staple to the point where I've got, again, two copies because I've got a trimmed version I keep on display for my Year in the Wildwood cards, and then I have this copy that I just use to read with because I want to use it all the time. So, that is the Wildwood Tarot. And last but not least in this category, will be no surprise, it is the Herb Crafters Tarot in this absolutely lovely bag from Sunset Bow Tarot. I am so excited about having this bag. Let's get the cards out, though. Why don't we? This is copy number three for me. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> so, I had a copy of this deck. This is another one I bought really early on, but I did not rehome this one quickly. And I think part of me knew this was going to play a big role somehow. But, again, it just... It veered a little bit too much for me. in the beginning of learning to read a couple of years ago. And so it's one that I kept around, but n quite literally never used. And then I did this um, like secret Santa type thing in this uh, Facebook group. And the woman who had me as her giftee <laughs> bought me this deck and 
just sent me the loveliest package and just said that she felt like this is one that I needed to have. Um, which is really kind of funny to think about now because my personal practice has veered so strongly towards the themes in this deck. Um, but at the time I just, I didn't, wasn't doing that yet. I didn't know that yet. <laughs> and so I got a second copy in this package. And so I ended up, of course, uh, giving away the original copy and I kept the second copy that felt like really special and gifted to me in that way. It was really, really nice. But then I just, I still wasn't using it. And then I had a friend who I knew would benefit so much from this deck. And it was just one of those feelings where it's like, they, they need this deck. So I ended up rehoming that copy too and giving it to that friend, which absolutely no regret again. But when last summer rolled around and I became friends with Andy, we were talking about this deck and how it just felt like there was something about this one that just, it, there was something to get out of it. And so we made the decision like, okay, but if maybe if we try pulling a card together every day, we could work through it together and sort of see, see what's going on here. And so I went and bought this copy of the deck. <laughs> and from doing that practice with Andy, it just totally brought out the magic in this deck and really went along with starting the practice I have now, which was really, really cool because in this deck they give you um, suggestions of things to do with all the different plants and herbs in this deck. And Andy and I were paying attention to that and like doing the things that we could. And it was just, it was so much fun. It was really a lot of fun. And so now I have that connection to this deck as well. And it just, it feels so special and magical. And it just really encaptures what I feel like my practice is based around, which is really, really cool. So that is the Herb Crafters Tarot. And that is the last deck in the decks I repurchased underdog category. So now we're going to go into the next one where it's just, it's decks that I never in a million years expected to even slightly like. <laughs> because when I first had them or saw them, it's like I had this reaction to it where I was like, eh, no, 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 no. And I'm going to start with probably the number one. And that is the Tarot of the Hidden Realms. I had such a visceral reaction to seeing this deck for the first time and some of the expressions in here like they just they kind of freaked me out with how realistic these facial expressions looked and it was at a point where just having any sort of realistic looking people in my decks was too much it just it was too much for some reason and so this is one where I was like, okay, I've seen a few cards that I really like, but overall, I'm never going to have this. This is not what I want. Oh, it was this card. I, this is the first card I ever saw someone post. And I was like, immediately, what is that? Like, oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. And then I looked into it and saw some of the other cards. Let me just find some of the intense ones that I was like, ooh, nope, no thanks. <laughs> There's that one really intense one. Where is it? I'm sure you all probably, if you have this deck, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. But it's just, it's so much. It's for that, with that woman screaming. Where are you? Oh my gosh, look at the hedgehog. So cute. Mm -hmm. There. Then I watched a flip through and saw that card and I was like, no. No thanks. <laughs> it just, it was too much for me at the time. And then I don't know what shifted. I don't can't quite remember when I got this one. It, I think it was last summer, where all of a sudden it was like mm, I don't know. I kind of I kind of want to try it. And it is a fairy deck, which I think it probably because I got so into my fairy work last summer that I've just I've wanted to try all the fairy decks out there and see what works, see what doesn't. And so this is another one. When it came up used, I was like, all right. Let's give it a try. And it has just become really significant in that fairy practice because there's something about the emotions that just really come across so strongly in this artwork that 
it just it just does something different than any of the other fairy decks I have. So um, this is one that I I tend to go to when I want to work with that fey energy in almost like a I guess you could say shadow work type way. And it's just it's been a really cool experience. I've actually been pulling a card a day from this deck lately as well which has also been really, really cool, but this has become such a favorite, and again, I never thought this would <laughs> be in my collection because I had such an insane reaction to it the first time of, like, absolutely not. So, that is the Tarot of the Hidden Realms. Next, we've got one that I don't- I could not tell you why this is, like, really in this category. It is the Field Guide to Garden Dragons Oracle. And I say that because, I mean, I love cute things. I love cute things. But I think this is one that when I first saw it, which I think this is not, this isn't even one I really watched any flip throughs of or saw it on YouTube too much. I would see it like in stores in person. And I think just from the cover, I don't know. I don't know. I think I I really judged a book by its cover and for some reason saw this kind of cuteness as like not being able to offer me something, which is a really interesting thing for me to think about because that is not a judgment I usually pass. Like just because something's cute doesn't mean it's going to be insightful, and I don't even look for all of my decks to be super, super insightful. Like, I'm, I have plenty of decks that it's just like, I just think they're fun. You know, and so I don't know what it was about this one, where I was just like, nope, not doing it. I don't know why. And then I saw on Candy Sullen Soil's channel that she pulls one of these cards a day with her daughter Tilly and just something about that <laughs> warmed my heart so much that I was like, I just want to get this deck because I want to pull a card a day from it, even though like I do not have a human child to do that with. I was like, I just feel like that's something I really want to do. And then I was thinking like, oh, and then I could bring it to the library with me and leave out a card for the, like, the kids to see. I, I don't know. I don't know what shifted in me where I was like, it's so cute. I just want to give it a try. This was also when I brought um, Smoke, Ash, and Embers back into my collection. So that that's another repurchase. That's another repurchase. But that is one I've not spent too much time yet, which is why I haven't included it in this video. And I just, I wanted to give this a try. And since bringing it in, oh my gosh, it has been such a favorite. Again, I don't require my decks to all be insanely insightful, but this one really has been for me, and it just, it, it's been so unexpected, truly. I, I got this really for it to be fun, but it really does offer a lot of things for me to think about, and they just make me so happy. I've pulled from this deck so much since getting it, and I know that's going to become even more so in the summer, especially as I get back into my gardening, and I really do feel a dragon practice on the horizon for me as well, and I think that's going to come more about as we get into the spring and summer, but this has really been such a favorite. I love it so much, and just, I can't believe I judged it so intensely, <laughs> that's just not like me usually, but that is the Field Guide to Garden Dragons Oracle. Next up, let's do another uh, Candy Soul and Soil inspired. <laughs> it's the Iris Oracle. Now this is another one where, the, when I was first seeing it, it was on Candy's channel and I just did not like the artwork. I really didn't. It just, it didn't do anything to me or for me. And I never thought this is one I would end up with. I really didn't. And I think there was, I, I saw somewhere some comparisons made to the Reclaim Oracle. So then even more so, I was like, well, I have the Reclaim Oracle, which I, I like. And so I don't, I don't need this one. <laughs> and then Andy got this deck as it goes and pulled some cards for me 
and showed me the guidebook and I was like, oh my gosh, no, this is entirely different from the Reclaim Oracle. Like, this is not the Reclaim Oracle at all. And then seeing the guidebook messages paired with these pictures, I really got it. <laughs> I got the, just the magic of this deck. And so then of course, got it for myself, <laughs> as you can see, since it is here. And I just, I've not put this away since I got it in a few weeks ago. I pull from this all the time. It's become my absolute staple shadow work type oracle. And it just, it gives the best messages. And especially I find a big difference as well from the Reclaim Oracle, which means to me, they are not comparable. Aside from this does lean kind of shadowy for me. Other than that, they're not really comparable to me. But another difference is that the Reclaim Oracle is very blunt and kind of... For me, it feels like I'm messing around with my wires because I have to plug my camera in and we're just gonna, we're gonna keep it rolling here. <laughs> um, the Reclaim Oracle feels like it's just sort of tells you how it is and leaves you to figure it out, which is absolutely warranted sometimes. This one feels a bit more like guidance where I'm pulling a card and it's giving me a solid message that I can think about. Which I, is what I really love about this one, because sometimes I just don't want to be left with the emotion, like Reclaim tends to do. So, this has really become quite the favorite, and that is the Iris Oracle. Alright, we've got one more Oracle and a Tarot here, so let's get into a probably very unexpected Oracle. <laughs> um, or sorry, expected, that's what I mean. A very expected deck and that is the fairies oracle uh, now this is one that again I had been on my radar for quite some time because I was seeing it probably on Danny Mystic's channel because she loves this deck and it's it's hard for me to even believe that when I first saw this artwork I really did not like it it just I don't know it freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but I feel like also it's one of those where when you see it on camera versus in person, it takes on a whole different life because to me, this deck has fairy energy. Like you, it's a, like you can feel it when using this deck, or at least I can. Um, I shouldn't say that's just a common experience, but this is, again, it's one that for so, so long I knew about, and it's always in my local metaphysical store, like they always have one in stock, and every time I saw it, I was just like, yeah, abs absolutely not, <laughs> do not like that, but as I was getting into more of a fairy practice, it just felt like one, like, all right, this feels like it's the fairy deck, so I should probably just, I should just give it a try. And so I went and picked it up from that local local metaphysical store, and I still, this is one where I was like, I was not convinced at all on it, but just, I wanted to give it a shot. And it was a very, very quick um, realization of like, oh yeah, like this is, this is it. As soon as I opened it up and pulled the first card and read from the guidebook, I was like, oh, I get it now. Like, I really do get it. And since getting it, I'm probably, again, like a year ago now, it's one that I pull from constantly. It is the real, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A real anchor, I guess you could say, for the work I do with fairies and the fae. Like, this is, this is the deck that I use. And it just, it just really, it's so cool to go through decks that just have felt so pivotal. And this is really one of those decks for me. So, that is the Fairies Oracle. And I've got one more to share with you today. And it is a newer deck in my collection as well. And that is the, the Ocean Tarot. And this is one I was following back from when it was on Kickstarter. 
so long ago now, and just, I don't know, just wasn't the thing, first of all, these backs. I mean, come on. Now, I do, I like the beach. I am someone who likes the beach, but I do not live near the ocean anymore. I used to growing up. I'm not, and it's, it's just, I've never felt like an ocean person. It's not, like water is not really my thing. I tend to lean very heavily towards anything earthy. And so as much as I loved the artwork of this deck, I was like, well, but am I going to use <laughs> an entirely water-themed deck? I just, I don't think I would. And so it's just kind of one I admired from afar, which is totally fine. And then I watched her other Kickstarter go up, which was the... Ugh. Legends... No? Yes? Oh my gosh, the only thing in my head right now is Legends and Lattes, which is that new book that came out. That's not at all what the deck is called. Oh no. It's the deck she came out with most recently that is all like folklore and legends. Anyway, besides the point. Wasn't drawn by that. And then I watched a lot of reviews of this deck and a lot of people just, their opinion on it was that the... As beautiful as the artwork is, it comes across really dark in person, so then I, you know, even more so, I was like, all right, I don't think this is one for me. And then, <laughs> this is gonna sound so silly, but we have, ooh, I'm not in the camera. We have planned for early April a vacation to Aruba, which I can't even, like, I can't even believe that's happening. Um, I don't even know the last time I went on, like, a true vacation like that. So obviously very excited. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, like, well, I need to have like beachy decks to bring with me because I don't need them. I'd be dramatic here. Um, of which I have none. Cause again, don't really generally, generally tend to be near a beach. So I was like, all right, if I'm going to get that though, as kind of like a excitement treat to myself. I really want to spend the time looking into different decks and thinking, all right, am I going to use this when I'm just at home, not near water though? And so that was kind of the challenge because there was a couple decks I really did like, look at these axolotls, oh my gosh. But I was like, I don't, I just, I'm not going to use it <laughs> when I get back home. And the difference with this is looking through these pictures, it reminded me of the show The Octonauts, <laughs> which is entirely a children's cartoon, like very small children cartoon that I love with my whole soul. I love it so much. And so I, as soon as I saw it that way, where I was like, oh, I'm recognizing these creatures because I learned about them from Octonauts. <laughs> I was like, okay. I gotta try it. I gotta try it. So again, came up used. Clearly that's the theme here, is if it's one that I'm like, I just need to try it. If it comes up used, it's like, all right, it's my time. <laughs> and so it came up used and oh my gosh, this has been such a favorite. And again, it's that totally new lens I have on it through the Octonauts. That probably sounds so insane. <laughs> But if you haven't seen Octonauts, totally recommend. It's amazing. And to me, the artwork is not super dark in person. I don't really feel that way. But I think also having it have this deep ocean feel is what's making me feel like it's usable not being near the ocean. Because this is also a deck I've learned, I've used for kind of like deeper emotional work because it's set you know, physically in this, what feels like deep ocean part of the water. And it's just been, I just, I love this deck so much. It feels like the water ocean deck for me and it's fantastic. I, I'm so in love with it. Never thought I would because again, this is what I've watched for years and always loved how it looked, but it's just been one of those where I'm like, but I don't, I can just admire it from afar. Like that's okay. And now it feels like such a staple. So that is the Ocean Tarot. And that is the last deck I have to share with you today. So I thought you, I hope you think this 
it was fun. Again, thank you so much to that lovely individual who gave me this idea. Um, and anything else I have to say? I don't think so. I hope you all are having a wonderful beginning to your week, and I will see you again very soon.